Today I will be covering the ECU retrofit to enable CCS charging. My Model 3 is a 2018 and does not support the CCS adapter. If you go into the software menu on the screen, click on the more info about the car and you will see if your car supports CCS or not. For those cars that are built after October 2021, you will see a CCS enabled on the screen. Mine says CCS not installed. In order to get support, you can either wait for Tesla to offer this at the service center sometime in 2023 at an unknown price. The alternative is if you are willing to be a little adventurous is to do it yourself. It's actually not that bad of a job, much easier than when I had to install the power frunk or new taillights recently. This is something that I wanted to do for a while now. The method I am using has been discussed thoroughly on the Tesla Motors Club message board. I have the link to the thread in the video description. Thanks to them for figuring out how to do this and for providing the wiring harness. Also, hats off to Alex Sibila for his video on this procedure. Here are the parts that you're going to need. First up is the Gen 4 ECU. I have the part number shown here and I will also list it in the video description. This costs $140 from the Tesla Service Center parts counter. I had to go to my local service center and talk to the customer service rep and he looked up the part and saw that they had it in stock at that location. He went to the service area and talked with them to verify. He came back with the part about 10 minutes later. He then verified my VIN and then made a purchase order that got directly billed to my Tesla account. I didn't even need to sign anything. I was pretty happy with the quick response. If your Tesla service center is far from you, I would call or email them to make sure that they have the part in stock before you arrive. I'm guessing that they could also order it for you if they don't have it. This is potentially the hardest part of the retrofit, just getting the ECU. Taking the ECU out of the bag, it looks almost identical to the original in the car. It has a translucent plastic casing with a circuit board inside and three connectors. Note that on the back there are two plastic tabs that will allow it to be attached to the car. And on the side is a hole for one bolt that will secure it into place. Note that all three connectors are different sizes and it makes it easier to attach the wires. Next we need a wire harness. The ECU has a different connector and we need an adapter that will connect from the car to the new ECU. This wire harness was created and is for sale on eBay by a member of the forum that worked on this project. I really appreciate them taking the time to offer this to other Tesla owners. By the way, the wire harness is an upgraded one compared to those that were available this summer. The wires seem better protected and wrapped. At this point, I might as well connect the wire harness to the ECU. Take the male end of the plug and insert it into the far left connector on the ECU. The other end will attach to the wire connector in the car. I recommend reading the retrofit message thread to get a good idea of how this works before ordering the part. I'm not making any guarantees that this will work for you and just so you know that if you have any issues you may need help from Tesla and it's not covered under warranty. Lastly, you need to get a Tesla CCS adapter. These are available, like I showed in a previous video from South Korea, or now in North America from other vendors. They are OEM compatible versions, not made by Tesla. I will be covering one in the next video, so stay tuned for that one coming soon. It will be significantly less expensive than the Tesla version. Now I'm going to list the tools that I used during the installation. First, we have the 10 millimeter socket driver or ratchet wrench. 10 millimeters is a common size for a lot of bolts in the Model 3. 
As you know, I'm a fan of using plastic pry bars. I must have at least a dozen of them now from all my projects. This is handy for removing the trim in the trunk area, among other things. This thin flathead screwdriver was needed to remove the connector on the right of the ECU. A couple zip ties in case you need to secure the wiring harness to the nearby wires to keep it from moving. And finally, a set of work gloves. And that's it, a pretty simple list. First, before we begin, the retrofit needs to have a software update available. This is because when replacing the ECU and wiring harness, the car will give off warnings and errors. By running a software update after you put the parts in, the car will identify the new components and will work fine. Make sure it's downloaded, but don't start it until after the retrofit is installed. Remember, if you don't use the software update, you will not be able to charge the car. We begin by shutting down the Tesla. When working on the car's electrical system, it's always a good idea to power down the car and turn off the high voltage system. Before doing the next step, open the hood, the trunk, and the doors. Go to the main menu and press safety, and then press the power off button. At this point, if you touch any button, the car will turn back on, so avoid touching anything. Wait about 15 minutes until you hear this sound. Go to the front of the car and remove the service panel. Using a 10 millimeter socket wrench, loosen the negative terminal cable on the 12 volt battery. Remove the wire and place it away from any metal objects. I put it behind the plastic mount right here. Go to the back seat and flip the two latches that are on the left and right sides of the seat where it attaches to the riser. Angle the seat and lift it up. You don't have to remove it. On the passenger side you will see a black foam pad. Remove it and underneath there is the high voltage connector. Flip the latch on the connector and then pull it out. Place it off to the side and then you can lower the seat. Now the car is fully powered down and you can safely work with the electrical wiring. In the trunk, the ECU is located on the left side behind the fabric trim piece. Find the trim clips. You may have more than one since I don't have the upper trim panel in my trunk. Use the plastic pry bar to pop out the trim clip. It may be easier to unplug the LED light that's connected to the panel, so I'll do that now. Pull back the fabric trim. It's soft and can be bent out of the way. Looking in the area behind the trim, you will see the existing charging ECU attached to the frame of the car. It has one 10 millimeter bolt attached. Unscrew the bolt with the socket wrench or ratchet. Then place the bolt aside so you can reattach it later. To get the ECU out, it will have two plastic clips holding it in. So carefully slide it out to the right to remove. There are three wires attached to it. You need to make sure the wires go to the same locations on the new ECU. Take a photo with your phone to help you remember where they go. The red wrapped wire on the left, the bare wires in the middle, and the plastic coil covered wire on the right. The left and middle connectors were easy to remove. However, the one on the right had a tricky clasp that I needed to use the small flathead screwdriver on to release. And now it's free. Now you can take the ECU and place it aside. You're not going to need this one anymore. Take the new ECU and attach the new wire harness to the top left connector if you already haven't done so. I first took the wire cable that had the red wrapping around it and inserted that into the new harness. Make sure all these connectors are in firmly.
Then I take the connector with the bare wires and then I attach it to the port in the middle of the ECU. And finally, I take the wire with the plastic coil covering and place it into the right port on the ECU. Slide the ECU back into place on the car body with the two plastic clips. Once it's solidly in its position, find and attach the 10 millimeter bolt and tighten it again. The new wire harness may dangle a little bit, so I used a zip tie to attach it to the other wires and it will keep it from moving around. Carefully fold back the fabric trim so that it fills in the pocket well and lines up with the edge of the trunk weather seal. Adjust as needed to get everything to fit back into the original position. Be careful not to pinch or move any of the wiring. Don't forget to reinsert the trim clips into the trim panels into the trunk frame. Now we reverse the process of attaching the electrical connections. Put the high voltage connector back in place and also don't forget the foam piece. Back under the hood, connect the 12 volt battery negative terminal and tighten up the bolt. Then place the service panel back on. Get back in the driver's seat and it may take a few minutes for everything to turn back on. You will notice possible errors that show up on the screen. In this case, a software update required alert appears. You may also see charge cable might be plugged in. If you press the charge cable is unplugged to confirm that there's no charge cable attached. In fact, you should still be able to drive the car even with these errors which is the reason why we want to run the software update. Proceed with the software update that has been queued by the car. I had mine set for a scheduled install for late in the day just to make sure that it would not run before I replace the ECU. This update may take longer than usual since it's doing some more stuff. For example, this screen update shows the autopilot is updating. Next one is the screen we definitely want to see, updating the electronic control units. And I guess autopilot wasn't done yet, the screen for updating autopilot just reappeared. It looks like it's getting near finishing, it's showing rebooting. I clocked my update at just over 40 minutes. Once the update is done, go to the screen and press the software button and then press additional vehicle information. The window pops up and now we see that it says CCS adapter support says enabled. Congratulations, it works. At this point, I will do a quick test to make sure that the port is working with regular AC charging. I will use my Tesla mobile connector, which happens to be attached to a NEMA 1430 outlet and charges at 24 amps. Insert the plug into the charge port and we see it flashing blue and then finally green. It's starting to charge. Well, that's it. The process worked and the software update mated the ECU to the car. In my next video, I will cover a Tesla CCS adapter alternative for much less cost. I'll stop at a 350 kilowatt CCS station in my area and see how fast I can charge. So if you don't want to wait for the official Tesla retrofit service, this is a method for you to use. The toughest part is acquiring the parts. Now that the official Tesla CCS adapter is available, it will probably be harder to find the ECU part at Tesla. Keep trying, you should get one eventually. The installation is easy, and all the parts that I used are listed in the video description.
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.